Dear Tenzin Gendun, we are happy to welcome you in Russia. Could you please tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? So, my name is Tenzin Gendun. I am ordained in the Tibetan tradition. I'm originally from Sri Lanka. Uh, then I grew up in England from the age of eight. Um, and I kind of officially, I would say, officially met Buddhism when I was about 21. Twenty-two. Um, I was brought up in a Christian family. But from the age of 16, I was probably atheist. Then about 21, 22, I started looking into religions and I came across Buddhism. And there I was interested first in meditation. So I, I didn't really know so much about the teachings of Buddhism, but meditation hooked me first. And then um, after, my, after completing my degree in London, I started traveling in India and and there I met uh, the tradition of the Tibetan tradition with the Dalai Lama and Lama Zulpan Rinpoche. And from there I was really inspired to follow that tradition more. So uh, having ordained in that tradition, I uh, ended up working in uh, Buddhist centers in New Zealand for a while. And now I'm actually currently studying in Nalanda Monastery in France. So one of the Buddhist, one of the only Buddhist monasteries within the Foundation for the Preservation of Mahanda Drishin, which is led by Lama Zopra Muche. I've been studying there since 2000. And I'm visiting here to give some talks on Buddhism. Could you tell us about the Nalanda Monastery? So, yes, okay, it's a good question. Okay, the Nalanda Monastery came about um, around the 1980s when uh, Lama Yeshu, who was the, um, the teacher of Lama Zopra Muche, he kind of decided or suggested to the Western monks that maybe it's time to start a Western monastery. Because actually in the 80s it was a little bit difficult for the first, first Western Sangha, the monks and nuns, who were ordained in India and Nepal, to have long-term visas to stay there. So Lama she said maybe it's the time to make a Western monastery. So um, luckily for us, there's a Buddhist center nearby our, our monastery, and the director of that center, through her research, found the land near, near, the, near that center and she, she bought the land and, and it was first offered to the nuns, but the nuns seemingly weren't too interested and maybe the monks were more, so the monks came and became an official monastery from 1982, I think, and it's been going ever since, for us, so yeah, since then. So, um, there have been three abbots, as far as I know, uh, I've only been there since 2000, so I know the abbot, which is cur the current abbot, which is called Geshi Losong Jampel. And uh, we actually started our official programs, like the basic program and the master's program, in 2006. We started the first basic program. That finished. It was a year break, and we started another basic program. Uh, and at the same time, we started a master program. So now I'm on the master's program. But uh, the second basic program is finished, and there's a third basic program starting, actually started this year. The master's program is now halfway through three years. It should be six years of study and one year of retreat. So, what is the basic program? Which topics does it cover? Is it available only for Sangha or lay people? Can also take the course. So, the basic program was actually kind of designed by Lama Yishin Lama Zopra Mbachu to try and give more of a a stable curriculum, like a, a really good introduction into Tibetan Buddhism. So they've chosen texts like the Middle Lumbering by Lama Tsongkhapa, Shantideva's text on um, Bodhisattva's way of life. Then they actually, they've also included philosoph philosophical subjects which include things like the different um, Indian sy systems like the Vabhashika, Satantrika, the Chittamatra, and then the Prasangika view. Basically show students how the pra Prasangika view comes about, you know, because to understand that from the beginning is very hard, you have to have a, a basis for that. So that's what we call the tenet system, so that was introduced. And there's also lorik, which is actually about minds, minds and awareness. Again, it's very important to know those things, because that's what we use in meditation, actually. You have to know how the mind functions, you know. And you also have to know how, how the, um, what we call the afflictions, the negative emotions function, how they can be removed by positive antidotes, you know, so we have to know how the mind is functioning, so we have Lorik. And then we actually have a, a little bit of Tantra involved, because our, our Tibetan system is including Tantra. And then we have uh, the Tathagata essence, which is about the Buddha nature. 
So explaining some fundamental um, uh, concepts we have to know in the Tibetan tradition. The master's program goes on a little bit further to include things like a middle way text by Lama Tsongkhapa, which is actually a commentary on Nagarjuna's um, system. And there's um, another system of called the Abhisamaya Alamkara, the ornament of clear, clear realization. So that actually gives another whole uh, view on the six perfections, you know, kind of, kind of by the way, it teaches on emptiness, but by the way, teaches about the six perfections as well. So um, that's, you know, that those, those texts take up a lot of time because we go into a lot of detail in them, okay? And then uh, in the master's program, it's also included things like um, now we're going to include Abhidharma, and we're, going to, we're also going to include um, things on Pramana, which is logic, you know, to actually reasonings, you know. And then we go on to the Tantric module. I think it will be the Guru Samaja this time, you know. So get, to get a, again a whole picture of the Tibetan tradition. So it's going to more depth. And the whole program is kind of designed that one day from the master's program there will be people coming out to teach in FPMT centers. That's kind of one of the goals. It's not the main goal, but the, the hope is that there will be more teachers in the FPMT. To sum it up, what is the difference between the basic program and the master's? The program, um, Although it's called a basic program, it's actually a lot of topics which are very difficult, some, some philosophical topics, but it's to give you a little bit more, it's, it's more of introduction into the Tibetan tradition. Then from there the master's program goes into more detail on what's been covered in the basic program. So that's, I think you'd have to have a little bit more determination in the master's program, because there's some, some philosophy, conceptual ideas which can, can be difficult for people, not everybody of course. Basically. And in general, who are the students taking the basic program and the masters? So now we, at the moment, we have we have um, oh yes, that's right. Because you're trying to say yes, because it's not just for the monks and nuns. We have, uh, of course, most of our monks are most of our monks are involved in one of the programs. But we opened it in 2006 when we actually opened up the study programs. We invited lay people to join us. So. Uh, the lay men can actually stay there if they have the means to support themselves. They can stay in the rooms if there's room. And the lay women that come, they try and find accommodation around the monastery in flats or in a nearby town. And they come every day to study with us and they share a life with us, you know. And um, so we, we take as much as we can accommodate at the moment. Uh, I think this program now that started this year has about 50 people altogether, including the monks who are not on our, in our monastery. Is it only the French people who attend the classes? All over the world, all over the world. We have uh, you know, from Germany, Spain, um, America, all over the world, yeah. Who is teaching the program? So we have two Geshe's living at the moment. So Geshe Lusson Jampel, who is now the abbot of the monastery, he's leading the teachings of the master's program. And that's translated into English by one of our German monks there. So most of our master's program texts are we, we're doing in English, all the texts are translated into English. We have a teaching assistant who actually finished the last master's program in Italy, in Pomaya. And um, so he's actually um, leading our review classes, setting all the exams, the quizzes, the presentations. The basic program, we have another Geshe who's, who just led the last basic program. So he's already been here five years. And uh, he's called Geshe, Geshe Geltsen. And um, so the last program was a little bit difficult because uh, we didn't have a review class teacher. So the Geshe was given the official teaching, teaching in Tibetan. We had um, a translator from Tibetan to English. And um, the review class was actually led by the basic program coordinator himself. So he had a, he had a huge task. He was organizing the program and actually guiding review class and doing exams, reviews, everything. Yeah. So, but this year, this year it started with one of our graduates from our last basic program, an Israeli student. She is now going to be the review class teacher because she's actually qualified from the last basic program, so she will lead the review classes. Yeah. So at the moment, it's going very well. And the, it's a little bit less because I think this year there is only English and French. Last year there was English, French, and Spanish, so it's a bit quite a lot. The master program is a lot less. I think we're doing we're doing only in English because we actually we don't even have the French translation of some of the texts, so all, all available in English. And then there's also programs online. For example, from the master program, there must be about eight or nine people doing online. For the basic program, I heard this year there's about twenty online. Okay, so if they really do all the 
syllabus, they will be able to get an online certificate, kind of an official document that they finished. When you complete the program, you receive a certificate. What opportunities and benefits does it give? Well, I think first it will be for their own individual development. I mean, the whole idea of the Buddha Dharma is to be able to get, give enough tools to pacify minds, to pacify our afflicted emotions. You know, the whole goal is this. So that's the basis. So if the, if the individual then decides to use it for sharing and teaching, that's up to him or her. You know, but the whole goal is that you will get a good understanding of the Dharma and perhaps even inspire you even to go further on in studies, maybe ha perhaps do Tibetan studies to go to an institute in India or Dharamsala. It could be many possibilities, you know. It could be also just for individual retreat. I mean, one of Lama Zopa's, Lama Zopa's ideas is to actually have this um, knowledge and then back it up with, um, with actual me meditation practice. So even the basic program, there's now like a daily a lum meditation involved that that's supposed to kind of nourish your practice, you know. And the master's program is also a daily meditation of lum rim, plus an actual um, a journal that we have to keep on how we're progressing, you know, how many instances of anger there are a day, can we reduce that, you know, things like this. So because it's about not just the intellectual knowledge, but about your daily progress in your life. So it's part of the components of the master's program that not only are a, a good student in terms of knowing the syllabus, but actually behaving properly as well, so that's included as well. The students have teachings, meditations, review classes. So how intense is the study process? Um, that's all relative, but uh, I, I would say, from my, my perspective, it's quite intensive because it's like a daily program, you know, teaching. For example, my, my program, the master's program, we start in the morning, we have a, a meditation, if we're doing, like the monks, who are doing the, the, the syllabus, they have a lum meditation in the morning they have to do and then they have to come in for teachings at 9.30, 9.30 to 12.30 we have the teachings, for half an hour break we have a lunch, then at uh, 2.45 we start the review class with our teaching assistant that goes on to 4.45 and then rest of the time where we have evening practices to do and we have our own self-study to do okay. and then the basic program is similar but they start everything in the afternoon they have a review class from 2.30 to 3.30, then they have their actual class with the Geshe at 4.30 and that ends at 7. Then there's a dinner break and then they, they also have their self-study and their own pers personal practice to do. So like this, you know, daily, weekly, it can be quite a strain intellectually and even sometimes physically. So there are Geshe's, are, both our Geshe's are actually encouraging us to really take care of our mind but also take care of our body to exercise properly, take walks, you know, do sport. because. Um, we have to get the balance, you know, of the, the whole thing. Yeah, but it can be rewarding because we have. I mean, they have quizzes every two weeks. We have exams coming up because it, it kind of gears you towards improving yourself. It can be seen like, well, it's quite stressful. But the whole thing is to actually the whole thing is to try and improve yourself. So an exam is actually to, to more to, for yourself to find out where you are, and for the teaching assistants to to know where you are in terms of how much more they have to give you in terms of review class and push you a little bit more so it's uh, if you look at it that way it's quite nice it's quite kind of holistic you know? how many months do they study during the year yes yeah, so we actually um both the basic program and the master's program we are running more like a, a scholastic kind of university style we have our breaks for example we have a break from this mid-december to the end of january and we have in the summer we have a break for about two months and then Easter, we have about one week. So those times can be for individual retreat, or to see family, you know, or whatever you have to do. So, but in, in between those breaks, we have a lot of intensive study. So in a way, it's balanced, you know. But also in the summer, in, in the Lander Monastery, we have a, possibly two or three retreats happening every year in the summer break. So it depends. Some people go away, some people stay for the retreats to profit from them. So it depends on the monks, you know. And also in the summer, we actually, because being a monastery, we are obliged to do what's called a, uh, the summer rains retreat. So most of the monks are encouraged, or we, we can't push them, but most of the monks are encouraged to stay on for their summer rains retreat, because actually it's an official part of being a monastery to do this uh, summer rains retreat. So in that time, we also have different retreats happening. For example, this year there could be Kandrala coming, there could be Janje Choje coming, the Gandan Tripa, the present Gandan Tripa. And there could be René Fuse coming, one of our Swiss monks from the FPMT, 
So there's a, a variety of choices that we have to retreat. Here in Russia, we have just started to rebuild the Buddhist educational system. But what about the West? How unique is Nalanda Monastery with these programs? If a lay person or someone aspiring to become a monk or a nun is interested in studying Buddhism, do they have many opportunities in Europe? Yeah, I mean, it'll be a wonderful place. It's really a rare opportunity. I mean, there is another opportunity in Italy, but it's. I mean, it's not the same kind of structure that we have in a monastic environment here, because really, it's really focused on, on a monastic environment. You see, so it's a little bit different. But then you have to choose which is uh, which is more suitable for you personally. You know, but yeah, if someone wishing to be a monk, even if someone wishing just to learn about Buddhism, it's an ideal place, and it's very it's very rare to have these kind of qualified geshis that teach these subjects. You know, it's quite quite unique actually. So if somebody has a chance, even if it's online, it's very worthwhile to do. Thank you very much.